What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on y'all so we are back again for another episode review of loving hip-hop miami this is season two episode two family motherfucking matters okay uh do 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 no i was about to do the uh do 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 let me stop i was about to do the thing song no okay i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that but anyway family matters but um we started off with trick daddy he in the kitchen cooking doing what he always do cooking his son is down there um, visiting for the summer, you know, he's proud of him because he's a scholar, uh, one of the top scholars in high school up in Tennessee. That's cute. That's, you know, I love it when the kids are out here doing what they supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, and so gunplay comes over, you know, he like, ever since, um, me and Kiara broke up, you know, I ain't really had a place to, uh, lay my head and to, you know, really eat some good home food. So once, um, you know, Trick Daddy was like, bitch, bring your ass down here, come get a plate. You know, I'm going to come get a plate or three, you know? And so they up there talking and they were talking, discussing about their children. Didn't know gunplay had a son and not only a son, a 14 year old at that. He said he doing good. He a scholar, straight A student, the total opposite of him. And then Trick Daddy, see, as we as parents, you know, we supposed to raise our kids up to be better than us and all this stuff. I said, all right. So then they started talking about um the whole thing with the TNT and Trick Daddy and Trina and them going back and forth uh at the thing and how Trina, he, Trick Daddy annoys the hell out of me because the way he downplayed the fuck out of that whole situation. Okay, Trina came late. All right. But you cut the song off in the middle of the thing. And you just been very disrespectful from the beginning, from the jump. Like, I couldn't be friends with a nigga who would dis, uh, would treat the shit out of, you know, disrespect the fuck out of my own family member who he's married to. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't be friends with somebody who would be disrespectful as hell to somebody that I know, somebody that I love, somebody that I care for. And that's what he did with Joy, you know. And that's, that that would have been a strike against him. And then the way that you talk to me as if I ain't shit, that's another fucking strike. We ain't finna work on no fucking um, project together. And so they get through talking about that. Gunplay was like, listen, I heard, because here go Trick Daddy. You know, the thing with Trina is she got all these people up in her head talking like she, you know, really the diamond princess. Well, technically, yeah, that's the, the, the thing that she gave her. You know, that's the name that y'all gave her, right? The baddest bitch, diamond princess, all that shit. Okay. Gunplay in the confessional, like, listen, I got my own problems, so I ain't trying to be involved in nobody else shit. And then he started talking about what was going on with him and Kiara and how, you know, he misses her. And um, Trick Daddy said, you know, there's nothing like having a woman by your side because if it wasn't for the woman that he had, you know, uh, he he would be in jail and all this stuff. And that's what gun. I said, but nigga, didn't you go to jail? But I guess he talking about when he had the woman by his side, by his side that stabilized him and everything. And that's what gunplay. Um, I'm sorry. Message. That's when gunplay was just basically like, that's how Kiara makes him feel like, you know, he don't want to get in trouble when he's around her. He, he just feels like a normal person. He stable, she stabilizes him and make him feel good and all that shit. Well, bro, you need to, um, you shouldn't have fucked up. Okay. You shouldn't have fucked up. That's basically what it all comes down to. You shouldn't have fucked up and now you regret and you don't, you know, um, miss what you got till it's gone. And that's exactly what's happening. Moving on from that, we get to see what's spectacular. Okay, what's up, y'all? I'm spectacular. We back here. You know what I'm saying? You know, I spend my time between LA and Miami or whatever. And um, you know, he just going through some things. We thinking that they getting back together. We thought everything was gonna be all cool, cold static last season. But then as soon as last season went off, we saw the drama that happened online on the blogs and all this stuff about pleasure and them getting into fights with each other, talking shit about each other, breaking up and all that stuff. Now, y'all ass is supposed to be, bitch, while we up here worried about B2 motherfucking K on this Millennium Tour, the Pretty Ricky is sitting there pretty and ain't nobody saying shit, okay? We need to worry about they asses, all right? Because you know, baby boo, that bitch will have a fucking heart attack on stage just from hollering at them niggas, okay? They, you know, they, he, he, you better respect your motherfucking father, that's still your father. Bitch, you know, I'm like, God damn, calm down. You know, I sent that shit on the preview, I said, bruh, he stole your money too. Why you ain't this mad? Because you was taking the money too? What's going on? But anyway, um, 
Yeah, I said we need to worry about it. and then slick him ass. Just slick him off that stuff. Okay, because if he ain't detoxed, all right, we're going to have to worry about his ass. Them, them motherfuckers clowning on the goddamn stage. And I'm going to be there front row sitting like this. So that's what y'all going to do? Oh, so you really going to act the ass like this? Okay. Shame on me. Fool me, bitch. <laughs> but you won't get me again. <laughs> But anyway, so, you know, he talking to Ray J and Fizz. He out there in L.A., I believe. Um, and, you know, Fizz been through the boy band thing. And then LA, uh, Ray J, he's in the tech world, you know, doing all the businesses. And shout out to Spectacular because he was wearing his company that he does, the little tech stuff, and, you know, media shit. And that man is out here making money, you know. And I respect people who don't have to put everything on the forefront, don't have to be so flashy. And you think sometimes when we don't see people, they ain't doing nothing Meanwhile, they doing a whole bunch of shit behind the scene, making their coins that way, you know, and he's one of the up and coming, you know, big business people out here. So congratulations to him on that shit. That's amazing. And so, you know, him and Ray J got some shit to talk about like that and dealing with family and the industry and all that. And, um, you know, he was talking about how he feel about his father and how his father was a big deal down there in Miami and he on some real gangster type shit and they just not really rocking with each other right now. He's like, every time I try to talk to him, it's always some negative stuff and I just want a dad. That's what I want. I want a father. And Ray J was like, have you spoken to him? He was like, maybe you just need to sit down and speak to him man to man like that and tell him what's going on and come from a genuine place. And we saw the preview when that motherfucker started crying. He said, you disgust me. Stop crying. I said, God damn. You know, but it, 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 he engaged and he don't even think he want his daddy to come to his wedding. Well, I said, that is sad as shit. I hope they get that together. Then we get Bobby. Uh, I was about to say Bobby Valentino. We get Bobby Lights. He out there performing, uh, rehearsing one of his songs or whatever. You get Prince standing on the side, you know, goofing off and everything. And I can see exactly why people think that Prince is like trying to play him or whatever. He comes in. And he just, it's like he intentionally tried to make stuff, mess stuff up, being goofy and make it seem like he make a joke of Bobby. That's what it seems like. His goofiness is trying to make a joke of Bobby, whether that's his intentions or not. You know, can we be serious? He's doing his rehearsal. I mean, Bobby ain't had no problem with it, but I found it like, uh, you know, after these people are seeing stuff, I'm just looking at them sideways. Like, what it really is your intentions? And then JoJo come there and um, trying to talk to him. And Bobby like, you want to speak to me? You're going to have to come to me and speak to me on my time. You know what I'm saying? And she didn't know Prince was going to be there. But she was like, fuck this shit. My thing of it is, I was talking to Miami Tip and this girl coming at me talking about some, you know, I'm up here trying to be a friend to you. And I'm not being a good friend to Prince because I'm over here talking shit about Prince and saying that you want to, um, you know, Prince over here trying to do this and do that. And, you know, her thing is, how does she know this stuff? And it's because Bobby is going over there telling her stuff. And Bobby was like, I'm just saying it was just when we had a little, you know, issue going on. And Prince like, what you talking about? What you talking about? Prince get all up in his feelings. Because JoJo said, first of all, it's more than a couple of people that have said the same thing that you basically using Bobby and um, Prince is in his feelings because he like, what am I using him for? Okay, I catch slack. I get, you know, people talking shit about me coming at my throat or whatever just for being friends with him because he is a gay man, you know. Uh, you know, niggas and motherfuckers just very small and closed minded when they think um, a straight man is cool with a gay man, then obviously something must be going on. No, they can be friends just like a heterosexual cup, uh, person can be friends with another heterosexual person. It ain't got, ain't nobody thinking that y'all fucking each other, okay? Because y'all be the main ones that's probably on the DL fucking each other, you know? I'm going over to the homie crib to play PlayStation with our joystick between our legs. Any fucking way. Moving on from that. You know. And at this point. Prince and JoJo get into it a little bit. And Prince goes off. Because JoJo was like. What you in my face for? What you in my face for? Whatever. He was like. What you doing? What you saying that? Like I'm finna hit you. Like I'm finna hit you. Why you? I said Prince. Why the fuck? He, he act like he had something to prove. And I said. Baby. This is a woman. Why are you getting so heated and shit like that? You going outside. And you pulling your shirt off. Like what you about to do? You're not intimidating or scaring nobody. JoJo was like. Men are the new bitches. Look at this bitch. I said. You know what? I ain't going to say men are the new bitches. But goddamn, He was acting very bitch like on that part. I said. That shit wasn't even cause for Prince. Who the fuck you trying to fool? So we get this scene with Tip. 
she's going over there to um chaotic place and we get a little background on chaotic you know uh his sister do her hair bitch when she walked in that house and just pulled that wig off bitch it's just it floored me okay i said oh we getting real comfortable up in this bitch y'all don't give a fuck all right you know on the one hand i was like bitch you are on camera and on the other hand i'm like bitch keep it motherfucking real okay the only question i had was did you wash your hair before you got there and then you blow dried it and shit already because all you did was set your ass in that chair after you pulled that hair off um and then you that girl just start braiding your hair i don't understand when i see shit like that you know when when i get my shit done because i know how my scalp be bitch i need my shit washed first before you put some new shit up on my stuff okay before i retwist my shit get it all styled or whatever ain't no point in getting that shit styled when um you know it's filthy underneath that bitch i just had questions with them crunched up edges i had questions with the peroxide just ate all of her shit and everything it's cute i mean i'm just i just got questions i know i wasn't the only one you know okay i got a thing for joy tip was like bitch you know i'm gonna let her come to the um thing that i got going on i'm gonna bring her but you know i don't think she good for him he ain't good for her i should say and um chaotic was talking about how he used to be a rapper the way he got to a rap thing rap scene was because his older brother used to be the rapper whatever but see his brother got into some shit that called him to um caused him to get 30 years in prison mind you mind you Chia uh chaotic chaotic said he didn't get uh shot 17 times throughout his life i said damn motherfucker you look like you probably only 25 years old Okay, that's a lot. That's telling. Moving on from that, we get the scene with um Trina and Ray. Trina is in her feelings about everything that happened. She said her and Ray been doing good. They moving in together. And, you know, he basically was like, you just need to sit your ass down, talk to uh Trick Daddy and tell him how you feel. And if he don't understand it and he don't want to budge on it, then let that shit be over and done with. Move the fuck on. I said, that's all that you can do. You the one that willingly want to put up with the bullshit. Um, we get Jojo and Amada La Negra. Um, they at some little gym or whatever, working out, working out. And at this point, Jojo got some shit to tell, okay? She was like, bitch, let me just tell you all this shit that was going on. So we had this little dinner or whatever, and Tip tried to come at me, you know, talking about some, um, you know, I uh, talking about I was talking about Bobby and, and Prince or whatever. I ain't being a real friend to them. I go pull up on Prince and Bobby and um, brought it to them because I know that Bobby was the one that was saying all this shit. A model of nigga don't like Bobby at this moment because Bobby got on Instagram and all this shit was talking about him music trash and whatever then tried to apologize she was like the bitch is messy okay he messy as hell you know he was the one that was spreading this shit around okay so you pulled up and then what caught me was when Amada was like I get you have a problem but you shouldn't have did it like that and see I didn't realize that what happened I must have looked I ain't feel like rewinding so from Jojo's uh, mouth, she said she pushed a prince out her face because he got up in her space and he pushed, she pushed him back. And that's what made him go off a little bit. But still, I'm like, bitch, you still was doing too much. Okay, get up out her space. You wouldn't have been pushed. But anyway, everybody keep your hands to yourself. And she admitted that she could have handled the situation differently. Then we get into what Jesse Wu was saying about her trying to talk to her man, talk about something, do you cheat on Jesse? And then talk about tips saying that, you you know you be all up in gunplay's um dm and all that stuff she was like bitch i don't want don't nobody want your man if i wanted a nigga i could take a nigga y'all finna be up in oh she can't say nigga that bitch black okay shut the fuck up but um she ain't veronica vega on this bitch okay so calm the fuck down but yeah i was like you know what they really trying to make him out of the villain she said bitch right when i'm trying to get my careers going off without a hitch these bitches want to come at me on some dumb shit I said, yeah, girl, you know, it'd be like that. But are you really up in motherfuckers' DMs, okay? Show the DMs. I want to see them. I want to see, bitch, what you trying to say. Was it business or was it pleasure? Nine out of ten, it probably was business, and they just trying to fake it off like it was something more. You know how they do in editing and shit. So Tip is having this little podcast, her little Tipsy Tuesday podcast, and she wants Jesse Wu to be there because she feels a little way about the way that she had to abruptly leave her um sister circle thing 
um, Sisters Live, whatever the fuck it is. And so, you know, they was in the process of getting to know each other, you know, so she had Jesse on there, her sister on there. They do the little podcast, and then Jesse goes on to talk about the whole thing with Amada Lanega and how um, her ex-manager took the idea of her doing this little sister live thing and, you know, drinking with booze and do, gave it to, you know, Amada. And her whole thing is, you know, JoJo wants to have a sit down with her and see what's going on and Amada and have drinks. And at this point, like y'all made me realize that I forgot about this. Tip never like Amada. So, of course, she's going to have a whole bunch of shit to say about her. Um, you know, I don't understand why you're trying to focus your energy on people that you don't fucking like or you don't uh, fuck with, but okay, you know, that wouldn't concern me no matter what the fuck she doing, okay? You don't know Jesse Wu like that, so why you so fucking concerned? But okay, it is what it is. Let's do this for the TV. And Jesse, you know, talk about something. I'm going to go there with a, um, you know, an open mind, okay, and try to understand why she trying to take my man, take my idea. Here's my thing about that idea of stuff. You literally just said in the first episode and this episode how your ex-manager used to take ideas that you came up with and give them to other people. And that is the reason why y'all met, um, you know, you no longer work with him. So why do you have it in your mind as if Amada came up with this idea to go to your stuff and to take your stuff and to go along with it? You just said that he took your stuff and gave it to somebody else. How do you, why, why would you, why, why are you talking as if you know that the girl, um, knew that it was from you or whatever? And, uh, let me just say this. It's a lot of people who had that same idea to, you know, get together with their girlfriends, chat it up, and, and drink and all that stuff. The idea isn't original, okay? I'm just saying. But why would you expect and think that it's Amada's fault that she got it? No, it's your manager. That's who you should be 100% pissed off about that part, okay? Moving on from that, so we get Spectacular going down to Miami. He, you know... His whole thing is, when Pretty Ricky is good, the family is good. So, he's trying to get Pretty Ricky back together to get this family back together. You know, he got to get the stuff ready for his wedding. He wants the whole family to be there. And so, when um, his daddy got out of prison or whatever, or Blue got out of prison, whichever one, they moved back in with the parents. And his brother, Special, I said, they really named them kids Special and Spectacular. You know what? You know what? Sometimes you just got to put it out there so you know what they... But sometimes that's a lot of pressure to live up to, okay? What if your kid ain't really as spectacular as you think they are or special? Because what the fuck is special doing? Okay, you know what? That's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. Moving on from that, you know, um, they was talking about the whole situation about Pretty Ricky needs to get back together. And the mom was, uh, you know, in her feelings about the fact that Spectacular left from Miami and felt as though that it was Jamie's fault, his fiance. Did you see when the nephew saw Blue and Blue picked him up and the nephew was like this? He was scared when he was like, look at you, boy, you got so big. I would have been scared too, bitch, you know? And so at this point, the mama crying. She was like, I feel like it's your fault that you the one that took my son away from me. You know how mamas are with their sons. And I bet you Spectacular probably the baby. Okay, and I said, girl, you need to cut that cord. How you know it wasn't his idea to go to L.A.? Can't nobody make nobody do nothing they don't want to do, okay? Um, grow the fuck up. You talk about something, but I'm just saying that it's supposed to be family first. He is thinking about his family, the family that he has now, okay? And that family comes first in his life, his son and his fiance. That who come first. Then y'all come first, okay? You know, that I hate when I hear shit like that sometimes. It just... Rust me away, all right? And he said, that's why I'm down here trying to fix the family so we could fix this whole group thing. And so the mom and special went out so that Blue and Spectacular can talk. And they whole thing is they need to get stuff together so that everything can be back on point because there's no reason why we fixed everything only for it to fall apart again like it did. And the whole thing is, uh, according to Spectacular and Blue, is Pleasure P got into it with one of Blue's friends and Pleasure P not here for Blue because Blue took the side of the friend. And Spectacular is just trying to be neutral, okay? You know, it's it's just it's just a lot of drama with them. Y'all fuck this tour up. I'm gonna fuck y'all up. That's all I gotta say. So Chaotic is at some club doing a little performance and you got Miami Till, Bobby Lights, uh Prince and Joy there. Okay, so at the end of the uh, performance, Joy is over there talking to Prince and Bobby Lights, trying to see what's going on with them. 
they kind of not speaking. At first, Prince said he didn't want to show up, but he did because he was being a little petty. You know, he had spoke to Bobby Light since the whole thing at the rehearsal because, you know, he a little disappointed in Bobby, you know, for coming at him and all this whole shit. whoop de woo And, you know, even Bobby said you was doing a little bit too much. And even if JoJo got in your face or he pushed you, you still handled it wrong. You was doing too much. And um, that's what we all said, bitch. You was doing too much. We don't know what point you was trying to prove, but okay. You know, he liked to put it out there that he'd been in and out of jail. I said, I can't see it, but okay, you know, looks can be deceiving. But all right. Um, moving on from that, uh, she, um, you know, Kayada get introduced to all the people. He was, she, he was like, it's cool, you know, Prince, Bobby likes, I seen Prince before. I heard about Bobby. That's whatever. But you know who I'm really here to see. He want to see Joy. You know, he macking with her. I said, take them fronts out your mouth. Take them grills out. It was just too much. You know, he being funny. And then kind of find out Prince trying to be a music star too. He trying to be an artist now. And he said he want to be a creator. And at this point, the way that Chaotic laughed in his face. Bitch, I laughed too just because he laughed. He said a creator. You know, we all said the same thing at the same time. We're looking like, so now you want, everybody want to be an artist. Everybody want to be a music star. You ain't no money in that shit, but okay, you just want the fame. Then you want the lights. All right. Camera, action, you know. And so as they go on, he was like, okay, cool. We can go into the studio just front me half for the studio time. And they just broke the ice and just was laughing because Chaotic is goofy. You know, it is what it is. And so we get the scene with um uh pretty Ricky getting back together. Spectacular had them, you know, come to this little office space and I said, uh uh-uh, uh, y'all finna fuck up these white people shit. Y'all finna fuck up not just white people shit, y'all just finna fuck up this corporate ass looking shit. Okay, that's what I should say, you know, because it just looked too clean up in there pristine clean all right and then why everybody else dressed casually you got spectacular with his you know he out here promoting his shit okay with his company's t-shirt on and some jeans you got pleasure p come in with a little jacket on a burgundy jacket some little cream jeans or whatever fine slick him he just dressed down like always and then you got baby blue whoa and he's sitting there looking like the angel of motherfucking death in this goddamn white suit Okay, you know, that with the white fucking silk bow tie. I said, brother, what are you doing? You finna go to communion after this? That's the, is it first Monday at the church or some shit? Like, I'm confused as what's going on after this. Okay, he clean cut like a motherfucker. But everybody was just sitting there, and I'm just sitting there like, bitch, I'm scared of one person at this table, and that's Baby Blue. That little munchkin, okay, that little butterball, that little Michigan man, that little Pillsbury dough boy, bitch, I don't know what's going on in his mind, but it ain't good, bitch. He looked like he was tick tick talking and what he was sitting there and being so quiet and all the whole time, it just looked like he was thinking of different maneuvers that he can get over to that table, other side of the table, and he can do this and he can do that or what he can do afterwards, okay? That motherfucker looked like he got all the issues in the world and I just don't want to fuck with it, okay? I will never make you mad. I will never say no more than, hello, how you doing, sir? It's nice to meet you. And that's it, okay? Okay, bitch, you won't you you probably ain't gonna get all of that. I just go across the other street, okay? Because I just don't. I just don't know what you're gonna do. And I can't run fast. You know what I'm saying? So hey, you probably can't either, but you'll probably run faster than I can. But you know it is what it is, okay? But um pleasure they tried to talk about what happened in cincinnati with the fight and who did what and who boy did this and slickham was in the middle and i was just trying to um break it up and you know you should have told your boy not to do this i did tell my boy now what would have happened if i weren't there you bet you still here right i said bitch damn he said what you trying to say you just said that shit to me hell yeah you still here now had i not been there it could have been worse it was like i mean motherfucker we can fight right now i said bitch Blue was sitting there and that motherfucking eye and face and teeth kept on sucking and and, and, and clicking and flicking and stuff. I said, uh-uh, twitch this way. Twitch, no, don't twitch that way, okay? Because he was just doing a lot. Pleasure stood up and Blue sat there without even flinching like, bitch, he ain't even say, what you gonna do now? That is the most calm, deadly calm I've ever seen Blue, okay? In all the seasons that we have seen him on here, on there, and we seen him on one season, okay? And you know how hype he was last season. But when that shit happened, he just sat there like this, menacing. Like, bitch, ain't nobody scared of you. I ain't even gonna fucking flinch. I said, bitch, leave that nigga alone. 
So, you know, Pledge just walk out, spectacular go out there, you know, pleasure like uh, spectacular, like, I feel like it's more than a Cincinnati thing. They have a little conversation, Pleasure come back in, and Spectacular is trying to speak, and Blue is speaking over him, and they just saying, this is what you do, okay? Pleasure literally just said, this nigga just turned into a mob boss, now you just talking over everybody, okay? What we up here for, okay? You won't, you let him speak, okay? Let him speak. What I'm supposed to do? What I'm supposed to do? I was like... Shut the fuck up and let the next person speak and then you your turn. But at the end of the day, they came to agreement that, yeah, okay, we're going to try to make this shit work. Trina and Trick Daddy meet up and they ain't get nowhere, okay? Trick Daddy don't understand, you know, I don't want to make no pretty records. Okay, bitch, you made two fucking records, all right? That's just the vibe for right now. You know, you ain't we ain't say we putting a whole album of pretty fucking records, okay? You put your album out, you up here doing all this. Hell yeah, I did that because TNT was supposed to be now. And my album was scheduled to come out after TNT. But see, the record label ain't even calling for TNT no more because you won't get in the um, studio and you won't do this and you won't do that. At the end of the day, TNT is over with. You be Trick Daddy and you be Trina. I said leave that shit alone because to be quite honest ain't nobody checking for probably just the folks down in miami no shade all right but i don't even think they checking for it right now so amada and um you know jojo and jesse Wu they um meet up but first it was just jojo and jesse Wu. now they sitting there chit-chatting they're having a good conversation yeah girl you know what happened i didn't know it was gonna turn out like that you know i'm sorry about that and they just laughing with each other but then when amada show up Jesse starts seeing what she heard and saying that, you know, I brought my man to this thing and then you was asking him about these uncomfortable questions like, do you believe in cheating? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? And then uh, Amada says, whatever, see, you're going about what your man said and what your man's saying is not the truth, okay? And from there, I'm thinking that Jesse is going to say, well, what is it that you said? You know, she didn't really do that. She just kept on going like, no, I know what I said because somebody else said this. And you never said what else was said by who, okay? You just kept saying that and Amada just got over it. And I would have been over it too. And she was like, well, if I made you feel uncomfortable, I apologize for that. No, you don't have to apologize for that because you didn't make me feel uncomfortable and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, Jesse, what is the point? What do you want her to say? You want her to own up to something that she claims that she didn't do? If I claim that I didn't do something, I'm not going to own up to that shit just to make you feel better okay and Jojo was like no you're getting a little hostile don't be disrespectful whatever and at this point I don't think neither okay Jesse did turn up a little bit just a little bit did I feel like it was being a little hostile Eh, not necessarily not necessarily to give all that energy that Jojo gave to Jesse after the fact okay Amada was sticking her ground she she said and then when she Jesse did start getting a little bit much when she was like you're not gonna do nothing okay don't ever do it again you don't tell a grown-ass person what the fuck to do and what not to do okay regardless of what the situation is you don't tell them what to do and then Amada said bitch I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want to do when I want to do it how I want to do it and to who I want to do it okay and then she did come at her in a little like, I'm not really trying to resolve this type of way. When she said, I'm thinking, what's next? You gonna hop on his dick too? Like, if you trying to solve something and get down to the bottom of something, Jess, you could have went about it the right, the, the, a whole totally different way. What I wasn't here for was JoJo, you turning the fuck up. Now, I just got on Prince for turning the fuck up on your ass. You turned the fuck up on Jesse, and she wasn't even fucking talking to you, okay? You, Amada don't need you to speak for her, and you ain't have to throw that drink on her, okay? And Jesse... You was dumb as shit because why did you throw the drink at Amada, okay? Jojo over there, you threw that whole last bottle at Amada. And if something would have happened to her, you would have been the one that would have been going to jail for that shit. And then you up here talking about some, you know, Amada got everybody full trying to be like she American sweetheart and all that shit. No boo boo. No boo boo. Everybody got all type of size. We been peeped that shit. Amada ain't nobody fucking angel, okay? We already fucking know that shit. But see, she made your ass look dumb as hell right then and there. You the one that turned the fuck up. And she just kept it classy and, and, and kept it just chill. When you threw that bottle, did she turn up? No, she didn't. Who throwing the drinks? You and JoJo. Who looking the fool? You and JoJo, okay? That was Love and Hip Hop Miami. Y'all tell me how y'all feel and I'll see y'all later. Peace.